Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I have here is uh, I would like to just go over a quick little kind of step by step on what you need to do when solving logarithmic equations. So when solving logarithmic equations, the first thing we want to do is make sure we simplify. Just like solving linear equations or quadratic equations, we want to be able to get them down to its simplest form before we start solving using our inverse operations. Um, especially like linear equations, if you have multiple x's, you want to combine them, right? Well, if we have multiple logarithms, we want to be able to combine those as well. So we need to do that by using the properties of logarithms, more especially the properties using condensing, right? We want to condense them together down to one simple logarithm. Once we have one logarithm, or maybe even a logarithm on both sides, uh, we can then solve by using the properties. Now, the properties of logarithms that are most common is, you know, one, just rewriting it as an exponential equation. So we like to take logarithms, rewrite it as exponential, because then you don't have a logarithm, and it's, I think, a little bit easier for you to understand, you know, how to solve it. The other way is if you have a log on both sides, you can use the one-to-one -one property. Um, as long as the base of the logarithms are the same, you can apply the one-to-one -one property to solve. So we first want to simplify, then we want to solve, but we're all using the properties of logarithms, which is very, very important for you to understand. And last but not least is to check your solution. Because um, if you have one solution, that's fine, you'll be okay. Um, but let's say you have two solutions. Well, look at the parent graph of log of x, right? Um, here in the parent graph, you can see it only at, it's only intersects at one time. The parent graph is at 1, 0. But there's no really other opportunities for the graph to intersect at another range. So if you're given two, um, two answers, you're going to want to make sure you can verify which one is correct and which one is extraneous. Now, more often than not, the one that is negative is going to be extraneous, but that's not always the case. Um, but I would probably start with the negative one first because remember, if you plug in a negative value and you try to evaluate for a negative uh, value, that you, that's impossible. So that would be your extraneous solution. Um, again, it's not always the case, but I would probably start there first because um, more than likely that will be your extraneous solution. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is just kind of like your three steps to solving a logarithmic equation. Thanks.